What's good guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you what is in my camera bag in 2022. This is the one time a year that I have a look at all the equipment that I use and all the equipment that I own and realise that I have spent way too much bloody money on camera equipment. On a positive note, I am going to be having a look through the hashtag CP photos at the end of today's video to see what you guys have been creating. So let's just dive straight into this. We know how these videos go. Let's start at the top with the camera bag itself. Over the last year, I've been finding myself using three different camera bags depending on the demands of the project. For people who don't know, I do both photography and videography, so my setup is always adapting and is always changing to meet the demands of said project. The first camera bag that I found myself using this year is this Manfrotto suitcase. I don't know the official name for it, I'm sure it's on screen right now. Uh, but this camera bag has a lot of great storage options. I can fit in all the lenses, all the camera bodies, monitors, microphones, batteries, laptops, chargers that I could possibly need within this single camera bag. So the second camera bag that I use is this one from Tarion. Now I bought this just before going to Budapest because I wanted something that was a bit more lightweight but also had a lot of great storage options and this is actually one of my favourite camera bags I have used. It is a plucky little guy that has a lot of great options and also it won't break the bank either compared to the other two. So let's just start with the top. Here you can put things like microphones, filters, anything really extra that you need. Then at the bottom here, we have a good amount of space for lenses and a couple of cameras. And at the back, we also have this laptop holder, which the clever thing is about this camera bag, and it's pretty sick, I've never seen this on another camera bag, is if you unzip these two bits right here, you now have a laptop holder, and then you could just zip it back on. Genius. The third and final camera bag, oh, bloody hell, that I find myself using is the Lowy Pro 450 AW2. This is the camera bag I use the most and I'm gonna show you how I set up this camera bag and what is in it. But first, let me see how much this actually weighs because it's heavy. Bear with. Found the scales. Let's give it a go, shall we? 12.52 kilograms. You can see why I like using the uh, suitcase one when I've got a lot of video stuff to do because that on your back, you feel that after the shortest amount of time. And as you can tell by my, uh, my, uh, my figure, I ain't well built. So let's open up the camera bag and let me show you what is inside and how I have everything configured. So let's start right here at the top of the camera bag with a dream lens of mine that I've always wanted to be able to buy but I've never been able to afford it or justify spending so much money on one and of course that is a 70-200 and I went all out. I bought myself the 70-200 f2.8 Mark II edition. This thing is pretty lightweight, it is sharp, it is fast, it has amazing quality to it in every single department it's a weapon it's a beast and no matter where i go no matter what i'm shooting this thing finds its way into my camera bag the next lens i have in here is a prime lens from viltrox it is the 24 f 18 now this lens i've actually made a full dedicated video on and i think it actually rivals its um competitors like the sigma and sony g master 24 prime lens it's an f 18 compared to like an f 14 but it's like a thousand pound cheaper nearly and it has great quality it's great for some vlogging with that shallow depth of field of f18 and it's actually the widest lens i own with the widest aperture so it's great for night photography as well i've taken some great pics with it next to that is the microphone that i use for all my youtube content it is the rode video mic pro plus i don't just use this for youtube content i use it for professional stuff as well and it is a great all-round microphone next to that we have the gopro chest mount i got the uh, gopro official one because i had a cheap one that uh, snapped after like a year and a half of use so in this little pocket right here i've been able to fit in the gopro and a couple of drone batteries i'll drone on about the drone a little bit later on but the GoPro that I'm rocking is still the Hero 8. 
I've personally not seen the need to upgrade to it like the 9 or the 10. There are some features that I like on those GoPros, but I can't really justify spending £400 when I have a GoPro right here that still ticks all the boxes for what I need right now. Another new addition to my camera bag this year is the 16-35 G Master lens. It's a great all-round wide-angled lens, has a great set of focal lengths, and I made a whole dedicated video about this lens as well. Anytime I'm doing running gun kind of stuff with YouTube and that, with vlogging, this is the lens that I'm finding on the front of my camera most often at this point. Over here we have my favourite prime lens which is the Sigma 85 f1.4. This thing is amazing. I love this prime lens. It is amazing for video, it is amazing for photography. I've done a ton of POVs with it and the results you get from it are pretty addicting. And also it's the lighter version of the uh, 85mm lens so it doesn't take too much footprint up in the camera bag and also doesn't weigh as much as the uh, version 1. Over here we have a battered and bruised warrior that keeps on fighting and it is of course the Sigma 24-70 f2.8. In my opinion the 24-70 is the most versatile lens that you can have in your arsenal Again, I've made a whole dedicated video about this particular lens and I would highly recommend if you are looking for a zoom lens to check out this focal length. I could probably do most of the video shoots and photo shoots I do with just this lens. It is great for so many different areas of photography and video as well. When I'm shooting client stuff, this is on the front of my lens probably 80% of the time, 90% of the time. It's a lens that's going to make you money and it's a lens that's going to give you the most amount of flexibility. A massive change to my setup this year is the camera itself. I am now rocking the Sony a7 IV. I decided to sell the R4 to get this thing. Now the R4 is technically better for photography because it has like 61 megapixels. It was an absolute weapon for photography but for video it was a little bit lackluster. It did it quite well but I needed something that was a good hybrid, so that was good for both photography and video for the content I create. This ticked all the right boxes. I am going to be making a video about this lens in the near future, but I want to do it as soon as I get back from New York City. I've booked a trip to New York from the 17th of October to the 24th. I have never been to America in my life. I cannot wait for the trip, and if you are around New York City, Drop me a message, let's see if we can go out and create some content together. It will also be great to have some help to film some b-roll of myself around New York. So if you are in New York, drop me a message, let's see if we can meet up, let's see if we can go out and shoot together. It would be awesome to meet some of you guys. Once I get back from New York, once I do some content around there, I'll do a video about this camera, but yeah, I cannot wait to go to New York City. It's going to be so good. So to be completely transparent with you guys, there are a few bits of equipment that are in this camera bag setup that I don't personally own. But one of the big perks with the company that I work for is I have 24-7 access to the editing laptop, the drone, and the Sony a7S III. And that is a good place to start, the camera. 4K up to 120 FPS, 1080 up to 240, the color science, the autofocus, that ISO performance, which cleans up at 12,800. There is so much about this camera that I love. I could go on about it all day, but I will say this. If I could own this camera, and if I could buy it, I would have one in a heartbeat. It is one of the best cameras I think personally Sony has ever made. And the lens that is currently attached to the a7S III filming this is the 14-24 from Sigma. It's a great lens for photography, great for video, and I will be doing a POV with it in the future. In this compartment, we will find the drone that I'm using, which is the DJI Mavic Air 2. Now this thing is great for photography, it's great for video, I love flying it. For the most part, I always have a little bit of nerves when flying a drone anywhere really. It could be the most open space in the world with no wind, but I'm always a little bit worried because you throw this up and you think, that's worth at least a grand, and if it crashes, that's a grand down the drain. So the flying process for me, I enjoy, but also nervous at the same time, but when you see that sweet footage afterwards, you're always like, chef's kiss. That was a terrible chef's kiss. In this next compartment, we have a few different bits of equipment. We have the DJI Mavic Air 2 controller. We have a power bank, and if you don't have a power bank in your setup, 
get yourself one. This thing has saved my bacon on more than one occasion. This particular one has 36,000 milliamps. So this can charge my batteries like three, four times over. It also has a wireless charger for your phone, has a pointless solar panel, and I think also has a torch on the back as well, and I've just bloody blinded myself. I've also forgot to say, if you do want to check out anything that I've mentioned in today's video, it all will be linked in the description below. We also have in this little compartment a dead cap for the microphone. In here as well, we'll also find a new vlogging tripod that I'm trying out. This one is from Smallwig. I've decided to try and move away from the Joby ones purely because the legs are a nightmare to deal with. And finally, at the bottom of this compartment, we have filters lots of filters we have variable nd filters we have polarizers we have the cine bloom filters which i still love using for video stuff and also for some areas of photography as well and then my favorite variable nd filters that i'm still using are these ones from freewell highly recommend these filters the quality is fantastic and the guys over at Freewell are absolutely awesome and then finally in this compartment we have cables we have a multi-tool we have chargers we have the sony batteries right here which are in this lovely little pouch and always numbered some of them are currently on charge and then we also have the DJI uh, filters for the drone. And in the final compartment, we will find a notebook, which I always encourage people to take with them. I use these to write down YouTube ideas, real ideas, expand on notes for certain video projects, client notes, the whole lot always goes in notebooks. And the final thing we'll find in this camera bag is of course an editing laptop. We have this Razer, ooh, fingerprint infested mess. Look at that. That really needs cleaning. This laptop is an almighty weapon though, even though it is a fingerprint magnet. The specs for which are on screen right now, and I could throw most things at it and it handles it absolutely fine. I think we can upgrade the RAM for this laptop if needed, but at the moment it's perfectly fine how it is and uh, yeah, also looks pretty sick. So this is pretty much my camera bag in 2022. A lot has changed. I've spent way too much money on camera equipment again. And there is also a few things I haven't even mentioned, like the Sony a6400, which is still a great camera in 2022. Do really enjoy doing POVs with that camera. I've missed out a few lenses, tripods. I've even forgot to actually mention the gimbal that I'm using, which is the uh, Ronin RS3, which is an upgrade from the RSC2. Really good upgrade this was. Didn't actually think there'd be a massive performance difference, but I'll tell you what, I've noticed a big difference in my own work. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that I have got to mention. If I've missed anything, if you've got any further questions, let me know in the comment section below. But the last thing we should do today is have a look through the hashtag CP photos and see what you guys have been creating. The first photograph we're gonna have a look at today is this one by DemIQ Shots. I really like the color grade in this shot. It reminds me of No Country for Old Men. And I haven't watched that film in a while, so probably will have to give that a watch now. But I love the colour grade, love that you've kept it in landscape, it really works well. This silhouette shot is pretty cool right here by Tucker's Photos in uh, Dallas, Texas. Let's go down. Oh, this long exposure one here by PJ is really cool. Really like that shot. That first one is definitely my favourite, but all three of them are really cool. This reflection shot by Capture Best is really ace from Oxford. Never been to Oxford. Love the look of it though. Looks amazing. Great shot right there. Oh, did I even drop it a like? Sorry, I didn't, did I? There you go, Capture. And oh, look at all these black and white ones. I'm going to choose this silhouette shot right here by Workplace Shutter. This looks really cool. Really nice aesthetic to it. And the next one we're going to have a look at is this umbrella shot. Always a win by Mr. Lincolnshire. Love it. I love an umbrella shot and I love the moody edit you've thrown onto it as well. These blue tones right here by Gosh, that's really cool. Love the aesthetic, love the vibe. Awesome shot. Let's have a look at two more posts today. The first one is going to be this one by Leo and I really vibe it. What a beautiful location. Love the green tones and waterfalls always make for great photography no matter what and the final photograph we're going to have a look at today is or oh, this one the shadow the light work by ca photography 06 that is a really cool shot really great eye 
really great detail, superb shot all around. So a massive thank you to everyone continuing to use the hashtag CP Photos over on Instagram. If you're not using it, make sure you do. There is a lot of creative and amazing talent using it. Go and share some love. Go and drop some comments on other people's work. Go and give other people follows and go and support this community of amazing photographers that keeps getting bigger, better and greater every single day. And uh, also your work might be featured here on the channel as well. But that is where I'm going to be leaving today's video. If you did like it, like, subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you're notified for whenever I release a new video. But until next time, create, explore and inspire. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.